Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to install SQL Server 2014 on a Windows Server 2012 R2 Server Core machine. And the tasks that we will do uh, actually in this video are first install SQL Server Management Studio on a client machine to make a test. Then uh, start installing SQL Server on the Server Core machine. And just note that on a Server Core you can only install 64-bit versions of SQL. After SQL is installed we also have to install some additional uh, files like a PowerShell module, some SQL tools and so on. Also this should be 64-bit. We need of course to configure the firewall. Also make some SQL configurations and at the end test that we can connect from the client to the server. So let's talk about some of the tasks. For the client install we first need to install .NET Framework 3.5 and after that we can start the installation of the management studio and make sure that you choose management tools basic and management tools complete to install everything that uh, the management studio has to offer. I will show you this when we get to the configuration part. Then for the server part we again have to install .NET Framework also on the server and uh, then install SQL Server. Now we could install SQL Server either by passing all the needed parameters directly at the command prompt or use a configuration file in which we can put our parameters which in my case is the preferred way and this is the way that we will do it in this video. After SQL is installed we have to install some additional files and you can get them from the first link. One of the files is actually uh, downloadable from a separate link that I put here and also uh, the other two you can get them from the first one SQL Server Management Objects and the PowerShell extensions. Please make sure that you get the 64-bit versions. So if we take a look at the address that I shown in the uh, presentation you can go to install instructions here and what we need to get is this, the command line utilities, which is a link in itself, the shared management objects and the PowerShell extensions. And this is what the files are called. So to download these two files, you just click on download and uh, find them in the x64 folder and uh, select them. We also have to configure the firewall. We have to open port uh, 1433. TCP port and in case we will use the SQL browser uh, this will be the case if you don't want to use the default instance name for a database then you have to open also uh, 1434 before we can actually test we also need to set up a couple of things in SQL itself we need to enable the SQL remote management. We need to configure the SQL server to listen on port 1433 because by default it listens on a dynamic port. After that uh, we just need to restart the SQL service and in case we use it also the SQL browser service. And we can go ahead and test that everything is working. So enough uh, for the presentation part, L now I will get to actually configuring uh, what I uh, explained. So here is the uh, main code that I will use, it's not too much. These are the parameters for the SQL installation. And uh, this is the script that we will use to enable the uh, remote management of the SQL server. And the first thing I will want to do is uh, go ahead and configure our client so we get it out of the way. And for the client we just need to install .NET 3.5 
and install the uh, SQL Management Studio. So this is my client, it's a Windows 10 machine and I have uh, mounted the DVD drive in D in order to install .NET. So we just have to run this command and in approximately one minute it should be done. Unfortunately we need a restart of the client before we continue so I will restart it now and uh, I'll see you after. After the restart we can go ahead and install the management studio. I got uh, the management studio from the Microsoft Evaluation Center and that's where I got also the SQL Server setup. So let's double click and uh, it will actually extract some files in a folder on the desktop. And after the extraction you don't have to do anything because the setup will uh, kick in automatically. And here we go. We choose the first option. We have to accept the license terms. We also should read them, but let's click next. In this case, we don't want to check for updates online. So let's uh, click next. Also here, let's click next. And for the purposes of uh, this video, we don't need most of the stuff. I only want the management tools and I will also check the complete version. Although I think we don't need it in this video, but normally you should install it to get the full uh, feature set. And now with the installation started, we of course have to wait uh, some time for it to finish. So I will come back when it's done and we can start on the server. After the client is done, then we can uh, start uh, configuring the server. And for the server, the first thing we have to do is also install .NET 3.5 to get it out of the way. I have my uh, DVD in E. And now we can actually install the SQL itself. And this is the command. We have to run uh, the SQL setup.exe. Uh, be aware that I renamed it to SQL setup. I think, I don't remember exactly the name, but it will have another name if you get it from uh, Microsoft. And we just have to specify slash Q for quiet and to use a uh, specific configuration file that I placed in the C drive. And this is what the configuration file actually contains. It says that I want to install SQL engine and I want to configure an instance with the name SQL Express. So this is the default instance for SQL Express. I want my administrator to be also SQL admin. I want to accept the service license terms, enable TCP, enable also the browser service, although we normally do not need it uh, since we are installing a default instance, but why not? And uh, disable updates. So this is all that I am doing in this file. Let's copy the command and run it on the server. And before I do that, I just want to show you that in C, I copied all the relevant files that I will use. So let's start. And for this installation, we also have to wait uh, some minutes for it to finish. After this is done, we can move ahead and install the free extra files that we need. We will use MSI exec. We will install these three files and only for the command line utilities, we have some uh, extra parameters that we need to set. And I just want to mention also that if you download these files, you will not have this part in the name. This is uh, something that I added myself 
because I also have the x86 versions. So either modify the script or also rename the files yourself. So I will run these three commands uh, together. And this actually should be quite fast. And it was actually quite fast. Now the next thing I want to do to get it out of the way is also enable the two firewall rules that I mentioned. And this is also done. Uh, now we have to use the SQL CMD utility to enable remote management of our SQL server. And uh, this is the actual command. We will use this exe with uh, minus s. And here you have to put in whatever uh, is right for your environment. This is the database server. And this is the instance. And of course, this is the SQL script that will actually configure the remote management, meaning this one. And it's done. Now the next commands are some PowerShell commands that will enable SQL to listen on 1433 instead of listening on a dynamic TCP port. And what we are doing here is importing the SQL PS PowerShell module. Then we make a reference to the machine object. And here you have to put the server name uh, that matches your environment. In the next uh, line also you have to modify the server name and the, the instance. And the rest can remain the same. Let's run everything together. And the import of the module will take uh, some seconds and it's done. Now the last thing we have to do is restart our SQL browser service and the service for our instance, which will have a different name if you have a different instance name. So just be careful about that. Let's restart them. And with this out of the way, now we actually should be able to connect to this SQL server from our client. And I hope it works. So since uh, we used Windows authentication and I gave my domain admin access to the database, we should be able to connect to VCS01 slash SQL Express. And here it is. So everything worked correctly. Now we have a database server ready to use. This was it for configuring SQL Server 2014 on a 2012 R2 server core. I am pretty sure that this should work also on newer versions of Windows, but for my use case, this is what I needed. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and share it. Also consider subscribing. And thanks for watching.